So this is Kevin from Restrator Apps, and in this video, I'm going to go over how to set up Gravity PMP. Now, this is a plugin that integrates and allows you to take registrations or signups on your membership site using Gravity Forms and add those new members to your Paid Memberships Pro plugin without having to use the default Paid Memberships Pro plugin registration form. So it's a neat little plugin. We had a lot of requests from customers who also who know that we also um, do similar projects or products such as Gravity Press, which combines and integrates Gravity Forms with Member Press. And so this was kind of a natural extension to that similar process. So we're going to go through, I'm just going to set up this form. I haven't, you know, I just created it brand new. So it'll, we'll go through the entire process. And before we get into that, though, let's just talk about some of the requ the requisites or the requirements. Obviously, you have to have Paid Memberships Pro, at least the free version, um, and Gravity Forms. Now, with Gravity Forms, it's ideal to have the Elite plan, the Elite version. And the reason for that is because it comes with uh, a few add-ons that you're probably going to want. Most people are going to want to use this plugin to take new registrations on their membership site. So they're going to probably have customers that are not uh, potential customers that are not yet users of their membership site uh, that will require you to have the user registration add-on from gravity forms and so that comes with the elite uh, plan for gravity forms so look at this one down here pretty important to so make sure that this is activated and installed the other thing i'd say is you're probably going to want a payment add-on so either a stripe add-on so there's a Square add-on, um, there's the PayPal standard add-on, uh, right up here, pay PayPal add-on. At this time, I don't believe that, I'm not positive that uh, our plugin currently supports the PayPal Payments Pro. It's not a very common request for us, and not many people that we um, that our customers use it, but if you do use it, just ping us. Um, if you're not sure, and we'll try to make sure to eventually have the support for this. But initially, um, the main ones are the PayPal standard, the Stripe, the even authorized.net, and Square should all be working. They kind of work all the same. But so as long as one is working, they mostly all kind of fall in line with that. Um, and then the user registration. Now, in this, in this tutorial, we're going to be using Stripe as a demo. And so what you're going to want to do is set up your Stripe in Gravity Forms first. You're going to go into the settings, you're going to um, connect it to your Stripe account, and you can kind of go through the Gravity Forms documentation to figure all that out. Make sure you also have your web hooks enabled. This will be very important to make sure you have a success um, logged in each submission for Gravity Forms. So basically, you know the payments went through, and it will also ensure that your... Um, you know, our plugin needs to know whether a payment was successful or not. So this is very important to ping back from Stripe back to your site to tell our plugin, hey, yeah, the payment went through, send this user to Paid Memberships Pro. So this is very important. Um, you have two methods to choose from. You can either use the built-in credit card field or the Stripe payment form. Um, in this example, I'm just going to use this, the Stripe credit card field which will embed a credit card in the actual form itself but you can also use the stripe payment form as well which is totally fine uh, and that will take you to another um, kind of like off-site to the stripe page kind of how paypal does it and then bring you back afterwards so we're going to leave these settings as is and i'm going to go back to our form we're just going to build a, a very simple form throw in the you know the new member's name their get their email address if you want to make a username for them you can have them do that too but I'm just gonna use their email <clears throat> anything else you want to build and go ahead and do that for us we're just gonna go simple we're also gonna to want to use a product field and this will only show up once you have the stripe or PayPal add-on um, or any of those turned on so make sure that that's done before you can't see these otherwise so I'm gonna bring it over a product and I'm also gonna bring over the credit card field because I want them to to pay on this on the actual form now I happen to have created those already in Paid Memberships Pro, if you just go to your settings and your levels, I created a bronze level for 10 a silver for 20 a gold for $30, and then I have a free level. Now, at the time of recording of this video, our plugin only supports one-time payment memberships. We don't 
support like a recurring to, you know a recurring feature or a subscription feature in Payment versus Fro at this time. The goal though, as we've done for our other plugins where we integrate membership plugins, is to get to that level where we are supporting subscriptions. So if you want subscriptions and you're not sure, the description below this video um, and we'll put a link down there to, to mention that we, we now have subscription or recurring payment support. Or you can just click on the link to go to our information page in the description of our website. Now, I want to go through, it's basically we have these levels, the bronze, silver, gold. They're one-time payments, like I say. Let's go to our Gravity form and see how to set this up. What we want to start with is we have this product um, name, this product field, and <clears throat> we're going to change this to um, either a drop down or we're going to change it to a radio button um, type. So you can choose either one. I'm going to change it to radio button for now because I think it looks a little better in terms of just displaying the different levels that they can choose from. And now it's there. I can also change this to uh, choose level. Again, it has to be one of these two. Single product won't work and any other ones probably won't work as well. I think we've tried everything and these are the two ones that, that seem to work the best. But we want to actually make sure that these populate with the right level. So we're going to actually go bulk add and scroll to the very bottom and you're going to look for gravity PMP. And as you can see, all of the levels show up that we, that we have available. Now, just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to enter the ones I want, but I could also just choose the ones I want by highlighting them. Um, I'm just going to go and click Insert, and all those get added. Now, if there's one that I want to remove, like the free one, for instance, I'll just get rid of it. Now, let's just add a total field so that they can see what they're purchasing. All right, now we're going to set up our feeds for this form. And we've already set up Stripe in the main setting, so we're just going to create a Stripe feed. Very important. Pretty straightforward. I'm just going to choose again products and service. I'm going to do form total as my main. Uh, that's where I need to have this um, address. So let's go back to our form and add an address field, a billing address field. Um, now you might be able to disable that somehow, but just for the sake of simplicity, I'll just add that there. There we go. And um, all right, now. Done that. If I go to Stripe, I can create this and it should allow me. Okay, there. So it's, it's all filled that out. Um, I'm not even sure that was required. I probably could have just allowed it to be empty and it probably would have still worked, but just for the sake of, again, ease here. Um, everything else looks pretty good. I can have a Stripe receipt sent if I want. And I'm good to go with this one. I can update that. Now let's also set up our user registration feed. Again, I'm assuming that you want to register your users as a WordPress user. Um, and so we'll just do that. Now the only exception to this would be if you have, uh, if you're basically just allowing somebody to add an additional PMP level to their existing membership you know, account and you don't really want to have them go through the registration process in PMP and you're just using Gravity Forms to do that. This would be a, a case where you could do it using our plugin and they can still be logged in. Um, but in, in that case, you just disable the feed here or just not use a feed for that form. So we're going to go through username. I'm just going to make an email address for, to make it easy. First name, last name, everything else. I'm just going to mostly leave um, default except for this one. I'm going to put this as a subscriber. Where is that? There we go. You can make whatever you want though. Um, Everything else is good. I can just go, go with defaults there. And finally, the last feed I want to set up is the Gravity PMP. Very important one. This is going to tell our plugin which field to look for, um, where, to, where to find the information about the um, Payment versus Pro feed. So we're going to go add. I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to see this um, drop down here. And a lot of people get confused about this drop down. Here's the simple rule of thumb. <laughs> You're going to see when you create a new one, um, Gravity PMP feed and a number, a number one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Now, if you're doing multiple um, 
forms for this. This number will change as you create another form. It'll be gravity PMP feed two, three, four. All I'll say is this. Whatever you have as the number here, just make sure that the number in this dropdown matches that number. That's my rule of thumb. Um, it's not super clear, and this is not something that unfortunately we can't do much about this user interface, but what I will say is just to be, make it simple, if you have a two here, just make sure they match up to here. And then for the um, field, what you're going to want to do is select the actual field where your levels are. So we have that choose level field that we worked on before. So that's the one we're going to choose here. And that's all we have to do. Now you can also uh, enable this. Basically, this will check to PMP to make sure that the user isn't already enrolled in that level and not allow them to if that's the case. But, um, you know, usually it's not an issue. So let's just save that. So now we have our feed set up. It's now time to test this actually. So let's go and create a brand new page where we're going to add this form to. And we'll just name it Gravity PMP or just something like that. Uh, let's add a block. And if you're familiar with Gravity Press, you just type in Gravity up here. You're going to get the embed block. You're going to select your form the one we've been working on, and now we have our form, which looks really nice. And just publish that. Then, let us open this, new tab. Now, <laughs> you'll see the form here, and it's very tempting to want to test this now, but this is a mistake that most people make, and I don't want you to just test it right here and now, because again, what you're likely wanting to do is recreate the same experience as your guest, as your potential customer uh, is going to have. Once, what's one thing that we notice? I'm already logged in right now, and I'm logged in as the site administrator, so that's going to be a problem. Um, there's a few reasons for that. Is Our plugin will first assume that the person who's logged in is the person who should be added to the level specified. It's just going to make that assumption. It's the easiest thing to do, and in most cases it works out best that way, especially if you're trying to add an existing WordPress user to a PMP level. Um, it's just easier to take whoever's logged in. Now, uh, the other thing too is that even if you were to try to log in uh, or to create a new user using the form and you're logged in, Gravity Forms is going to give you an error if you have the user registration add-on enabled. It's going to be like, hey, you can't try to register this new email. There's already an email with that person or something like that. Uh, and that'll be, or, you know, and, and even though you haven't entered that email in there, it's because it's taken this one's email. So the easiest thing to do is to log out, or um, what I would just recommend is testing with a different browser or a different, um, like make sure you're in a private session. So if we go here, we can just easily go up to open in private new window. Here I'm not uh, logged in anymore. There's no indication I'm logged in. So this will be a fresh uh, login. And let's just test this. I'm going to do a Kevin test. And I'll just say Kevin at test1.com. I'm going to just make up a bunch of silliness. Um, country. state somewhere and let's just do silver that's twenty dollars now if you have stripe testing on you can just go through their um, guide on how to do test credit cards but i just do that one for easy uh, easy method there and i'm just going to make up anything here just making up a bunch of numbers making up a name and this is ready to be tested now let's give it a shot And because it's doing a payment, it will take a little while. It says this email has already been registered. So that means that I probably have done a test with this particular email before. So let's just change that to something I probably never used before. Try one more time. Let's give it a go there. Again, it's talking to Stripe right now, so it's taking a little longer. And we have a we have a success message. Now let's go back and see what happened. <clears throat> well, the easiest thing we want to do is first just check our entry. 
see if Stripe sent us back a good note about the payment. So we have a Stripe ID, that's good news, and we have a Stripe successful payment completed. That's great news too. Now let's see if anything happened on the membership side. All right, so if we go to members, we will see that indeed the user was registered as a, uh, as a new member, but also as a member of the specific level we asked for, level two. Registration date, start date, all that stuff. Also, if we go to orders, we can see uh, the order that went through. It's $20 paid, uh, we have the visa information, we have the transaction, all that stuff, success. And we can see uh, that that's there. If we go to our reports, we can see the information that is available and how much we made for the day. So all that's been added um, and we're good to go with this user. Now one thing I will say is if you happen, and this is kind of a caveat, if you happen to want to not um, charge for a particular uh, membership fee, uh, membership level, so let's say we decide that we are going to add that free membership down here and we're going to add the free one as an option for um, for either member for either new users or for existing uh, users existing members uh, what I want to make sure is if you do that that's fine um, in fact you don't even have to uh, you don't even have to use a product field in that case you could actually just use a regular drop-down so in fact you could um, set it up to use either a regular drop-down or a radio button I'll just throw a radio button here um, again, in this case, we're not going to even add a credit card. We can remove all this. We can remove billing information. And this is, again, just an example of what we would do if we just wanted to do everything free. And, um, or just say, you know, let's say I just want to give them a free membership and I don't even, there's no, there's no other choice. There's just free. So I'm just going to say level here. And what I'm going to do in this case is just add the free membership by itself. And there you go. That adds it to the right level. And then what I'm going to do is um, make it default so that it's automatically um, submitted no matter what. And I'm going to make it a hidden field. Now by doing that, I can basically add someone to either like a free membership. Some people want to add stuff to a free membership or they have like a free trial. That's another option. Um, now this is a free uh, membership and I just want to make sure that in my level, the only thing I, want, I need to make sure of is that the level is set to uh, free here. This has to be free for that to work. So that's just a little caveat. Um, again, in that case, if I did do something like that, I'd also want to make sure that my uh, Gravity PMP is correctly updated. So in this case, because I updated it with a different field, I need to go down and just set it to level this time. And that should work and allow um, you to accept a free uh, or add new members to a free membership level. Hopefully that helps. This is, again, a very basic walkthrough. There's always other kind of caveats and advanced features that we can get into. And if you have questions, as always, leave us a message. Uh, at restratoapps.com and there's a, a little contact form that you can um, give us a throw us a message we'll be able to get back to you as soon as possible thank you so much have a good one